One of the few good things about the pandemic is that by now we all know a little bit more about biology. For example, we all know now that for SARS-CoV-2 to replicate itself, it needs us. Like all viruses, it hijacks a key part of our cells known as ribosomes to assemble the proteins it needs to copy itself. Well, ribosome is one of the most fundamental molecules in our cells responsible for production of proteins. And this means they're the readers of our genes. All life on Earth depends on just 20 amino acids or large organic molecules which are combined to form proteins. Our DNA uses short strands of messenger RNA which is read three genetic letters at a time to tell our ribosomes the correct order in which to assemble these amino acids which are brought to the ribosomes by molecules of transfer RNA. But viruses have none of this cellular machinery. They are basically a strand of genetic material encased in a protein coat. Professor Ninad Ban and his team have been studying the mechanism SARS-CoV-2 uses to hijack our ribosomes. So we copy DNA into RNA so that we can copy some portion of our DNA genome more and some, some copies. So we make less copies of some other portion of our DNA genome. Viruses cannot do that. So because of this, they employ special features of this RNA molecule, their own RNA molecule, in order to control relative amounts of proteins. And one way how they can achieve that is through so-called frame-shifting mechanism. And this frame-shifting mechanism means that when the ribosomes are reading viral RNA, they will, for example, read along, and at one particular place, instead of reading triplet after triplet, sometimes when they move to the next triplet, they do not move fully. So basically, they move by a fraction of this unit of three uh, letters. And this is called frame shifting. Maybe I can, I can still show you. This is, this is a, an actually a, a model of, of the ribosomes that are these uh, readers of genetic information in our cells that have to bind to the viral RNA and then scan along and read it. And these ribosomes have two parts. This part here, this is called small subunit, and this part is called large subunit. And this small subunit actually binds the viral RNA. And the way this would, this would look is, you can think of it this way, just one second. So I just took a little piece of rope here, and you can see, so this would be in a way a viral RNA, and the ribosomes would have to move along and read along. And if for some reason the viral RNA has a, a bit of a knot here, it will slow down the progression of the of the ribosome and cause a frame shift. So it would basically, this messenger RNA would end up slipping. And then finally, when the slip happens, this is one particular place in the viral genome, then the ribosomes will continue and read the message. That knot is the key discovery made by Professor Ban and his team. It's called a pseudonot, and it's this feature that regulates the proportions of different proteins the virus needs our ribosomes to assemble. So the virus needs to produce different amounts of proteins from the beginning of the message and from the end of the message. So if they were all read at the same time, same amount of proteins would be made. But because this slip actually happens only in 50% of the cases, then the beginning of the message will be read with full readout. In a way, 100% of, of, of proteins will be made. And then the slip happens, but just sometimes, and then when the slip happens, then the rest of the message makes sense, and then the rest of the proteins that are being synthesized are produced at 50% lower levels than the beginning. So if, if anything perturbs this process, if a single letter of these 30,000 letters is changed at the place where this frame shifting happens, the virus cannot survive. So it's, it's an extremely delicate, sensitive, important spot in the, in, in the life cycle of the virus. So if you can disrupt that? Yes, that would of course be disastrous for the virus. And it's this kind of disaster that Professor Ban and his team are now trying to bring about for SARS-CoV-2. Now that we understood the mechanism of frame shifting, we also decided to try to uh, uh, understand and compare 
uh, whether compounds that have been previously described to inhibit frame shifting may also be able to inhibit viral replication in cell cultures. And so among the compounds, there are some that have complex chemical formulas and are referred to with numbers, but uh, fairly recently another class of compounds has been described to have this ability. There are uh, compounds belonging to the class called fluoroquinolones, and one compound in particular called merafloxacin, we have now tested and compared to other compounds that were described before with respect to this ability to inhibit viral replication. And indeed, uh, these compounds ended up being quite potent and they can reduce the viral replication by orders of magnitude, showing the potential of use of such compounds. These drugs wouldn't prevent us catching COVID-19, but they would decrease symptoms and increase survivability. Such drugs are known as antivirals. For, for some viruses, there are some antivirals, but for many, there are no good antivirals. But, but, but a, an amazing success of science is now um, evident with, for example, HIV. There is a number of compounds that can be used to prevent them from actually developing the symptoms that HIV virus causes, to the level that the virus is almost undetectable in the bloodstream. So these, these are not compounds that can fully eliminate the virus, that, but they can basically suppress it to the point of not being dangerous for the person who, who has contracted HIV. Professor Ban warns that it won't happen soon, but perhaps his team may add another antiviral drug to the growing list that will help us live with COVID-19.